One of the worst things a soybean farmer can get is soybean cyst nematode. It's a terrible problem all across the country. It's a problem that is spreading too. As areas grow soybeans longer, it's just about a given that soybean cyst nematode is going to make it in your area because it's a problem you just can't get rid of. Once you've got it, there's nothing that completely eradicates it out of the field, or at least nothing that's been found yet. Well, yeah, there's a lot of talk though about products that are coming out or going to come out. There might be biotech traits that could actually either repel or even kill some of these cyst nematodes. But you know what? Right now, that's all fiction because we can't do it today. You've got to figure out how you're going to manage cyst nematode and live in a world where we can't actually kill them. Well, one thing about cyst nematodes too is that there are many different races of those nematodes. So you're going to see a, a product that may work well on one race, but all of a sudden then that race mutates a little bit and you've got a new race that is something that would be resistant to whatever that control So for example, was. if you've got a soybean that is called resistant to soybean cyst nematode. It's not resistant to all cyst nematodes, just resistant to certain races. And what we're running into with a problem is the best yielding genetics have one particular soybean cyst nematode trait in them. And that's okay for a little while, but when it's used broadly across the whole country as it is right now, it just isn't going to work long term. Okay. So there are some other cyst nematode resistance parents that are coming through the system, but they're having a hard time breeding some of that yield drag out of them. Okay, That's so we've given you the bad news so far. Yep, it's rotten. We have no way to control them. So let's talk about identification and then what our steps are to manage through the problem right now. So how do you identify it? Well, first of all, you want to do some soil sampling where you're going to send in samples out of the field. Preferably, you would do that maybe in September or August. But that sampling and isn't always consistent because when you send the sample in, sometimes it gives you a false negative. Well, the populations of cyst nematodes in your field go up and down throughout the year. So you may not hit that hot spot in your field. You may hit a time where they're in kind of a, a dip in their population. But what I would do is go out in a soybean crop and go right where that root mass is. And that's your best chance where you're going to catch the highest number of nematodes. And especially if you don't know if you have any, it's a good way to find out if you're ever going to see them, they would be in a soybean crop right around that root. Okay, mass. if you're going to dig the plant up, what are you looking for on the roots? What do they look like in comparison to soybean nodules? Well, they're a lot smaller than nodules made from rhizobia bacteria. They're going to be quite a bit smaller. You can still see them with the naked eye, but it would be really helpful to have a magnifier glass to look and they look like little lemon drops they don't look what uh, are they exactly they are actually the female cyst nematodes body in many cases the female cyst nematode will enter that root and as she gets impregnated uh, she'll actually kind of burst through the side of that root a little bit and you'll actually see that female full of uh, little nematodes right there that's a beautiful picture you just painted for us Darren so let's let's talk about uh, later on in the year, what does it look like on the leaves of the plant if they're affected by cyst nematode? Well, in most cases, I would say in 80 or 90 percent of the cases, you aren't even going to see it. You aren't even going to know that you have it. You're just going to see, wow, that yield monitor didn't really show up very good in that particular area. I didn't yield as well. Now, when the population builds over time, then all of a sudden you're going to see some symptomology on the leaves. And at first, it's going to look a little bit like potassium deficiency in soybeans where the outside edges of those leaves will kind of yellow or brown up. And then as it gets worse, you're going to see whole plants just starting to go down, almost like if I top through a root rot, where those plants will shorten up, yellow up, and eventually just die. Okay, but is it venal yellowing or intervenal? Well, it, it's for the most part, it's it's a general yellowing across that leaf, but it's probably not going to show up as much on the veins as it is in the intervenal material. Okay, and in terms of management strategies, I guess what I always tell people who say, well, I've got a major problem with cyst nematode, I just tell them real simply, plant nothing but corn or plant corn, wheat, all the crops that we can't have cyst nematode problems in that aren't hosts for cyst nematodes, just go plant those. The other management strategy is just weed control. There are a number of different weed species that can host soybean cyst nematode, so kill all your weeds. Don't let weeds go in your fields. Well, here's another big thing. You gotta make sure you're doing a great job with fertility, with drainage. Make sure everything is great. Your diseases are controlled, your insects, because if the only thing you have out there for a problem is soybean cyst nematode, usually the yield loss isn't that bad. It's just that when you have cyst nematode plus something else, plus another thing plus another thing pretty soon you're losing 25 bushels an acre so a soybean cyst nematode there's no great answer right now plant resistant varieties if you can if you have them available in your area which really anywhere in the united states there are varieties available plant different parents 
of resistance. So different modes of resistance wherever possible so you can alternate. And then of course use crop rotation to your advantage. Rotate away from beans for a few years and those numbers will come down a little bit. Well, it's really important to watch for soybean cystine toads in your field. It's also important to watch for our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up next.